I admit, it's pretty exciting to identify which hosts are alive and running on a network, but I'll tell you what, it's even more valuable to you and I to know what services are running on those systems. And using port discovery, it can help lead us to understand what those services are. There are three basic benefits of doing port discovery. Number one, if we identify what ports are open or available, that usually indicates the type of service that's available. And the reason that port discovery is fairly easy to do is because if we have a server, let's say we have a server right here, let's call it server one, and then we have Bob, who is sending a packet over to that server. When that packet shows up at server one, it's addressed at layer two if we're on ethernet to the ethernet address of the network card of that server. And the server is going to de-encapsulate that information and pass it up. It's going to pass it up to the network layer where we have IP running. And the server says, oh, that's my IP address. And then the IP header, it talks about what layer four protocol is in the IP header. And if it's an HTTP request, it's going to be using TCP. And if this server is running a web service, it's very likely going to be listening on TCP port 80, which means if we send a request to TCP port 80, the server will respond in predictable ways back to Bob. And that's how Bob the user, or at least his computer, can know that TCP port 80 is open and available on this web server. And here's the great news. Because these protocols are operating in predictable ways, we can use tools that leverage and take advantage of those basic characteristics. So this is an example of a traditional three-way handshake, the expected behavior when two devices are setting up a TCP session. And very similar to when you're at a party and it's time to say goodbye, we don't want to do a party foul, we want to say goodbye appropriately, TCP also completes its conversations in a certain manner. And the typical TCP termination would go something like this. Bob would send as a TCP flag in the TCP header a fin flag, or the fin flag being set, with a sequence number. The recipient, in this case Lois, would send back an acknowledgement, which effectively says, yes, I received your termination request. It's also going to send an acknowledgement number associated with that acknowledgement. So because Bob's sequence number was 90, Lois is saying I would expect the next sequence number, if there is any, to be 91. Lois is also sending her own sequence number of 207. And then if Lois doesn't have anything further to say, she can also send another TCP segment with the fin flag set as well. She'd use her next sequence number of 208, then Bob, having received that, could acknowledge it, along with acknowledgement 209, which if there was going to be further communications, that would be Lois's next sequence number. And for this segment, Bob is also sending his own sequence number of 91. So his initial one was 90. In the acknowledgement that came from Lois, she's expecting the next one to be 91. So Bob is simply following up the conversation with that sequence number of 91. And voila, this TCP session is now terminated. So in the process of port discovery, we can use the behavior of TCP and other protocols simply to knock on the door. So if the attacker or hacker wants to discover if port 80 is open, he could send a TCP SYN request on port 80. And if we get a SYNAC back, bada bing, we know that service is open. Or more specifically, the port is open, which likely leads on the well-known port of 80 to HTTP services. And then the hacker, instead of following that up with an acknowledgement, could send a TCP segment with a reset flag set basically to tell the server, hey, never mind. And that way the hacker can do a scan of ports very, very quickly without tying up a whole bunch of resources. So this graphic indicates a source port of 6783 going to the server's IP address at the well-known port of TCP 80. Now, on the other hand, if the hacker had sent a TCP SYN request at port 80 and got a reset back, it didn't get a SYNAC coming back, but it simply got a reset, that would indicate that the port is closed. Port 80 on the server is not open. In the TCP header, besides the flags for acknowledgement, synchronization, fin, and reset, there's also a flag for push and urgent. And here's my question for you. What if you and I crafted a TCP packet slash segment, sent it to a server, and we didn't follow the quote unquote rules? For example, maybe we send a fin flag or an urgent flag when we have no established session with that device. See, what that allows us to do is we can leverage the way that some systems respond to wacky packets as another method for discovering whether a port is open or not without having to do the three-way handshake. In this nugget, you and I have discussed some methods that protocols use, for example, TCP with its flags, and how those can be leveraged and used to discover open ports that are running on a system. Hey, thanks for joining me in this nugget. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.